Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with roasted smashed potatoes. That's right, we're gonna smash and then roast potatoes, which will create something gorgeous in appearance that features the ultimate in potato recipe texture, the proverbial crispy and crunchy on the outside, and yet soft and fluffy in the middle. And please do not confuse these with the other thing people call smashed potatoes, which are just mashed potatoes where people were too lazy to peel the skins off. All right, I'm not a big fan of those, unlike these, which I'm a huge fan of. And what we'll need to get started is some medium-sized Yukon Gold, or in my case, yellow fin potatoes, which of course we've washed carefully because we're gonna eat the skins. And what we'll do is add them to this pot, along with some nice cold fresh water, and we will place those over high heat, and also add a fairly generous amount of salt. All right, that's about a third of a cup of kosher salt to about three quarts of water, which might seem like a lot to people that just add a pinch, but that really is one of the keys here. And then what we'll do once this comes up to a simmer is lower the heat to about medium low and let these simmer gently until they're tender. And other than giving them the occasional stir, there's really not much else to do except wait for these to cook to the perfect doneness, which is just tender. And of course, we will test those with a small sharp knife. And while we definitely don't want these super soft and falling apart, we also don't want them undercooked and still firm. Otherwise, we're gonna have issues when we try to smash these. And the last thing you want when you're smashing something is issues. So like I said, we will go until these are just tender, at which point we'll drain them very well. And then as soon as they're cool enough to handle, or before, we'll go ahead and transfer them onto a sheet pan, which will allow them to cool a lot faster. All right, because we want these to cool all the way down to room temp before we refrigerate them. And while we're waiting for that to happen, I like to do one optional step, which is go around the side of each potato with a sharp knife, making very shallow cuts through the skin, like an eighth of an inch deep, all right, maybe like four or five on each potato. And the reason I like to do this is because potato skins are very tough, and sometimes when you smash them, all the skin will sort of stay together on one side, and all the fluffy potato from the inside will kind of smush out the other side. So by making these cuts, once these are smashed, that skin will split a little more uniformly and will hopefully have the same amount of skin all the way around. All right, so that's my thought process here. And it may or may not make any huge difference. But regardless, once those potatoes are room temp, we'll go ahead and pop them in the fridge until thoroughly, thoroughly chilled. Okay, overnight is best, but they must be totally cold before we smash them and roast them. And then the only other thing we're gonna have to prep here is our garlic herb butter which we'll do by melting a stick of butter over medium heat, along with some fresh rosemary and thyme, and a whole bunch of thickly sliced garlic. And by the way, you can use chopped if you want, but we're actually gonna use that sliced garlic as a garnish later, and I think it's gonna look a lot nicer if we do it like this. And then all we're gonna do here is cook this stirring until that garlic just starts to turn translucent and softens up. Okay, we are gonna cook it a little more later, but for this stage, all we're doing is infusing the butter with this garlic and herb and the garlic shouldn't really take on any color at this point. So what we'll do when it looks like this is simply turn off the heat and reserve until needed. And then once that's set, we can pull our cold potatoes out of the fridge and get to smashing. But before that, what we'll do is prep a pan, which as you can see, I've lined with a silt pad. And we'll go ahead and generously butter that all over, as in very, very generously. And by the way, I should mention that these will cook and get crispier faster if you just use a bare metal pan or a foiled pan. All right, so this setup will take a little longer, but the advantage is you don't have to flip them halfway through the roasting. But anyway, once that's set, we can pull our cold potatoes out of the fridge and get to smashing, which I like to do between some plastic using some type of flat, heavy object. And I got a little excited on this first one and did it too thin, but that's okay as long as it doesn't fall apart, it'll still work. So we'll wanna do the next one a little thicker. But anyway, once smash, we'll go ahead and season the top with salt, pepper, and cayenne and then carefully flip it over and do the same to the other side, at which point we will transfer that onto our pan. And please note, for filming purposes, I'm only doing one pan here, but in real life, you'll probably use a couple pans, making sure to spread them out nice and evenly so they're not overlapping. All right, so let's try that again, only this time we won't smash it quite as thin. Okay, I'd say about a half inch thick is perfect. And by the way, some people like to do these all at once by pressing down on the top with another sheet pan, but personally, I prefer to do them one at a time, and not just because I'm paid by the hour. All right, I think we have a little more control. Plus, these only take a few seconds anyway, and we can make sure they're seasoned properly. But anyway, if you want to do them all at once, go ahead. 
I mean, you are after all the Steve Nash of how you smash. And then what we'll do once our potatoes have been smashed, seasoned, and panned is go ahead and drizzle on and brush over a ton of our garlic-infused butter. All right, don't be shy. We want a lot of butter so these get nice and crispy and crusty. And that's it. Once these have been severely buttered, we'll go ahead and maybe sprinkle a little more seasoning over the top if we feel the need at which point these are ready to transfer into the center of a 450 degree oven for about 35 to 45 minutes or until very well browned and extremely crusty. And while we're waiting, what we can do is put that garlic and herb back on the stove over like medium low heat and cook it until those garlic cloves start to caramelize and turn a nice light shade of golden brown. Okay, we don't wanna to go too dark. So I'm gonna turn off the heat when they look a little something like this. And then what we'll do once our potatoes are done is spoon this garlic over the top to create a beautiful and extremely delicious garnish. So this step is optional, but also mandatory. And that's it, once our potatoes have cooked long enough, we'll go ahead and pull them out. And not only should they look stunningly beautiful, they should sound very crispy and crunchy. Oh yeah, fork don't lie. And if everything's gone according to plan, the bottom should be just as crusty and brown as the tops. And we'll go ahead and serve immediately, transferring those onto some kind of warm platter. At which point we'll go ahead and spoon over those soft and sweet garlic slices. Or garlic confit, if you like things to sound French. And that's it, once garlic, I went ahead and finished off with some freshly snipped chives. And that, my friends, is just an amazing, possibly perfect platter of potatoes. Whether you serve those as is, or with a side of sour cream and chives like I'm doing here, and I think one reason I love this technique so much is that it's sort of like eating all my favorite potato recipes at once. Okay, with that beautiful, buttery, crusty exterior surrounding that soft, light, fluffy interior, it's sort of like home fries meets mashed potatoes meets french fries meets potato pancakes. Only better. And of course, herb-infused butter, along with soft, sweet, sticky slices of garlic, don't hurt either. And if you're thinking, sure, that looks delicious on that plate all by itself, but would it also work next to some roasted turkey, smothered in gravy? Well, yes. Yes, it will. It will work very well. And by the way, that turkey you're seeing was a little bit of an experiment I did, cooking a turkey upside down, very quickly, in a very hot oven. Okay, believe it or not, I cooked like a 16-pound bird in just about two hours. And it actually came out surprisingly nice. So stay tuned for that little adventure. But in the meantime... I really do hope you give these amazing roasted smashed potatoes a try soon. So please follow the links below to get the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.